My name is Brad Epley. I'm the chief conservator at the Mineo Collection. Although the Eternally Obvious was designated a cut-up painting in 1930 by Magritte, this designation does not literally reflect the process by which the painting was created. Microscopic examination revealed that each of the five canvases was painted separately. The paint layer does not extend onto the tacking margins as it necessarily would if the painting had been initially realized as a complete image and then cut into smaller sections before stretching. The tradition of academic painting relies on the rigid deployment of transparent and opaque paint applications to convincingly depict three-dimensional forms. Forms are developed using a monochrome sketch, working from the shadows to the highlights. The darkest areas are usually this monochrome color left in reserve. The middle tones are a thin, semi-transparent scumble of lighter paint over this dark color, and the highlights are the thickest and most opaque applications. While the figure in the Eternally Obvious appears at first glance to have been achieved via this method, Magritte uses only an approximation of this painting convention. Of the five paintings, the execution of the head is the closest in terms of technique to this academic method. The other panels rely on the blending of equally thick and opaque layers of dark and light paint to achieve form, which is a more direct approach. Magritte was very successful, and grew increasingly so, in achieving a visual approximation of old master realism, the truth of which is revealed only on close inspection of his paintings. His ability to call into question what is seen extends to both his technique and his imagery. He paints with a calculated realism, executed just well enough to convincingly depict the forms with nothing more to convey the individuality of the artist.